Welcome back to the Built for Anything podcast. I am your host, Hertz. Oh man, in this episode, I have my man Brandon Miller with me, aka B Mills, Mr. B Great himself. And I asked him to come on the show to talk about, you know, how to be great. <laughs> we talk about work life balance. We talk about a couple things that he's that he has going on, uh, including his foundation, including his book that he co-authored, uh, as well as some of his inspirational content that he puts out there on social media, and just a lot of different things. He's a really, really cool brother, uh, got a good head on his shoulders. Uh, he has merch that he's selling. Man, just just a really, really fun episode for me, uh, really getting to know the brother. And so I know you guys are definitely going to enjoy the conversation that we have. Now, if this is your first time watching me or listening to me on iTunes, please consider if you're listening on iTunes to leave a review. Five stars, hopefully. Uh, leave a review. It does help the show. And if you love the content that I'm putting out, please help me in to be able to continue to give you these type of videos. Sign up to the Patreon. Uh, the link will be below. Uh, you could start off with as little as $3 and it will go to help the show. But in return, you'll be able to watch episodes like this in advance, as well as some other perks and discounts and benefits uh, that you'll see on there as well. So without further ado, my man, Brandon Miller. Enjoy the show, y'all. Peace. Mic check, one, two, one, two. Welcome, everybody, to the Bill for Anything podcast. I got with me my man, Brandon Miller. Yes, sir. What's up, bro? What's, what's going on? What's going AKA on? AKA B Mills. There you go. There you go. B Mills. Be great. Got to love the shirt that it. the man got you on. got it. Tell people a little bit about yourself, bro. Well, what's going on? Uh, Brandon Miller uh, here in Dallas. Uh, by day, I tell people I am an IT consultant and a diversity professional. I lead my company's uh, diversity and inclusion uh, practice. And um, outside of that, I do I do a lot. Um, I'm all about um, you know serial entrepreneurship, philanthropy, community uplift. So I've started a few different brands, a few different initiatives that are all kind of falling into line with with, with that. So. I'm sure we'll dive into a, a lot of the different projects that I've that I've been working on and things like that on the show. So I'm excited to talk about it, man. Yeah, man, you got a lot going on, man. So we're gonna have some good conversation. Yeah. There's definitely a couple of things to cover. Um, I want to start with the awards. Yes, man, you got an award recently uh, for what was your category? It was a uh, nonprofit of the year. Nonprofit of the year. Yes, yes. With okay. Cosign Magazine. Let's 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 talk about let's talk about the pro, the, the actual um, nonprofit first. Absolutely. How did you start it? Um, so it's funny. It's called the Two Fly Foundation, um, and the story. It's it's really been a process over the past couple of years on how we started the organization, how we've grown the organization, and we're making the impact that we're making now. So the mission behind our foundation is uh, providing students with passports and travel grants. So we uh, work with students in underserved communities. Uh, and we just want to get them abroad. We want to uh, show them what it's like to travel abroad, to learn and get a global perspective. Um, and we do that in a very creative way. So we travel the country doing different uh, you know, fundraisers and we, we have um, brunches. We do happy hours. We do day parties. We do concerts, all kind of different creatively lit events, we call them, mm -hmm. all to raise money and get students abroad. Uh, starting the nonprofit um, we really just started it as a, just kind of like a simple way to give back. We just wanted to throw a happy hour. That's a good uh, place to start. Yeah, yeah. Anything. And, you know, being the the millennial young professionals we are, we we're like, well, what do we like to do for fun? Like, what do we like to do after work? We like to go drink and, you know, mm -hmm. <laughs> interact with one another, <laughs> things like that. And... Exactly, exactly. Um, so we figured, okay, maybe we just throw a happy hour and we'll work with the bar that we're having it at to donate uh, a percentage of the proceeds um, that we spend at the bar. So that's kind of how the idea was birthed. And we've grown so much since then. Um, we've been to over 11 cities. We've provided over 100 passports to students in underserved communities. Mm. Uh, and we've been rocking. The team and I have been rocking for about two and a half years now. So it's been a great so, journey. So you're a traveler yourself? I am a traveler myself, yes. What are some of the places you've been to, man? Some of the oh, nice ones. Yeah, I've been to, to Cuba, Costa Rica, uh, Mexico, Croatia, Maybe Dubai, Croatia. Mm -hmm. um, Ireland, Amsterdam, all over Europe, pretty much. I studied abroad in college. Oh, okay. um, so I studied in Metz, okay. France. 
So I went to Georgia Tech. We actually have a campus in France. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's really where I really kind of developed that love for travel. What's your favorite place? Ooh, I, I have a I have a lot of different favorites for different reasons. Um, mm. I would say Cuba has been my favorite culturally. Mm-hmm. Just being able, like, I felt like I was going in a time machine, like going to Cuba, seeing like all in the vintage the cars, the yeah, surroundings, like the, the culture and the colors mm-hmm. and just like the way of Very life. Beautiful over there. It was, I was only there for like uh, maybe three or four days, mm-hmm. but I, it was a blast. Yeah, mm-hmm. absolutely. Um, but outside of that, I would say uh, this year I actually went to Greece and that was a, a very eventful and fun trip. Uh, it was like over a hundred something, you know, young black professionals. Mm-hmm. We went to Greece. We turned up. We saw the sights. Mm-hmm. It was it was a good time. I gotta ask you this because you know when it comes to traveling, right? People travel for different reasons. Yeah. Um, but I always tell people like when you go somewhere new, don't just take in the scenery. You know, take in the culture. Like oh, you, like you mentioned Cuba. What is the thing that you you feel like you take back the most when you go to these places and then you come back home? Mm-hmm. What do you what do you what do you feel like you you bring home? What's that experience like? So for me, it's all about like gaining a global and diverse perspective. Mm. Like when you're going Very to important. these different you're going to these different places, and I'm a huge history buff. Like I love history. Um, so kind of seeing how these cultures were built and how they've grown and how they developed and what they place their importance in, that's so cool and so unique to me. And I feel like every time I go somewhere new. Um, and I and I embrace a new culture. I learn a little bit more about like the world and about people mm-hmm. um, and how people interact and what people value. And I think that's just a huge like leadership trait that I bring to to work, um, to my interactions with people here. Um, so yeah, I just I love the culture and I love just learning about these different these different places. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so you you do you travel alone or do you usually go with a group of friends or yeah I usually go with a group so it just okay. it just depends it could be a group of a two or a group of a hundred and something um, <laughs> but <laughs> it's a yeah, lot of people bro yeah it, okay yeah it's a it's a lot yeah but mm-hmm. it's it's always a good time it's always a good time mm-hmm. yeah. uh, you wrote a book yes co 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 authored co authored right? a book yes um, talk about that man yeah so the book is called uh, the intersection shifting into greatness. Um, and it is a book Good that title. really hones in and it kind of tells the story of different entrepreneurs, creatives and change agents. So like mm-hmm. philanthropists. And we really talk about, you know, when they kind of realize what they're really passionate about, when their mindset shifted um, and they started going, you know, balls to the wall, for lack of a better phrase, mm-hmm. um, with their passion. And then we talked about like what makes them great, what makes them unique. Mm -hmm. So it's really through the book, you you hear from 30 different young millennial entrepreneurs of color about, you know, their mindset and how they've embraced their greatness and it's it's advice, it's tips, it's tricks um, and, you know. Quality product, if I do say so myself, I have to say Mm -hmm. because I co-wrote it. So (laughs) how long did it take? How long was it in the making? Um, It was probably... A year and a half to two year process. Okay. Um, and it, it took longer than like we expected it to take, mm-hmm. mainly because, you know, through the process, we were, were very, Simone and I, Simone is the co author, we're very efficient, we're very, you know, methodolog- methodological, whatever the word is. I don't mm-hmm. know, I'm struggling. Mm-hmm. Um, but methodical. There you go. <laughs> That's what I was looking for. Yeah. <laughs> um, but, you know, we're, we pride ourselves on efficiency. So we we started and we were like mad efficient at the beginning. Like we we got we reached out to all the people we wanted to talk to. We got their interviews. We put their stories together. Um, we were contracting out some of the, the designs and things like that. Well oiled machine. Mm-hmm. And then we got to a place where it's like, uh, you know, we're almost done with this book. Do we really want to finish it? Like this is a lot of work. We all have our own other brands. I still am working in corporate America. And it, it was a process in itself. And we realized like we were kind of getting in our own way. We're getting in mm-hmm. our own heads and that really prolonged the process. Mm-hmm. And once we kind of had our come to Jesus moment where we uh, just kind of like sat and we're like, this is something we said we were going to do. We have a quality product. Let's get it done. We're like right back at it and kind of cranked it out in a couple months. Mm-hmm. So overall it was, it was like a two year process. So you managed to balance a lot of these things that you got going on, even yeah. while working at corporate America. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know if you want to talk a little bit about what you do in the corporate field. Uh, I think it's around tech. Yeah, right? yeah. So I'm an IT consultant. Mm-hmm. So I, I went to school. I went to Georgia Tech to study engineering. 
Um, so I studied biomedical engineering. I just knew I was going to be an engineer uh, working in the prosthetic and orthopedic space. Uh, once I kind of interned and kind of dived into it, I was like, eh, I don't think I want to be, you know, behind a desk engineering for the rest of my life. Um, so I got into consulting. Uh, so what I do is I, I help companies uh, implement uh, or, you know, make their processes more efficient when it comes to their technology, when it comes to the tools that they use um, and things of that nature. So I've been doing that for about four and a half years now. Mm -hmm. uh, in addition, um, I also lead our company's diversity and inclusion um, kind of council. So I work with our leadership and I work with our business processes on making sure that everything that we're doing is or it's equitable, it's inclusive, um, and we're kind of highlighting and, and engaging with different backgrounds and different uh, genders and personalities and diversity of thought and things like that. Um, so that's what I'm really passionate about, and I've been putting uh, a lot of time and effort into that. So you, in terms of technology, man, mm -hmm. because, you know, I've had a few people on here. Um, I know you know you're familiar with Jeff, mm -hmm. and, and he talks about uh, the tech industry mm -hmm. um, and a couple other people as well. And the importance, but also the importance of people of color, people like us having a space there, Absolutely. right? What is your opinion on that, or how do you feel about um, just the the that world? And I guess the I don't know if I could say the lack of presence that we have. Mm -hmm. um, if so, you know how can we be more efficient in that area? Yeah, no lack of presence, and that's the perfect way to put it. Um, at the end of the day, there's not enough of us. In, in STEM and in tech. Um, and, and what I kind of tell people is our future is, is digital. There's no way around it. Everything that we're doing, when you think about how we buy, how we sell, when we think about who's stocking shelves now, it's all going to be you know machines. It's all going to be automated. It's all going to be with uh, artificial intelligence and machine learning. Uh, so our future is tech. Mm -hmm. And what I tell people is there's there's not people of there's not enough people of color in tech and um, in coding and in computer science, and with that, our stories still kind of are going to get lost in the digital future. So we we really need to up our presence and um, our influence in the space. And it, it starts with kids. It starts mm -hmm. with the youngest generation, and you know, making tech cool, making it um, you know just as aspirational as being an athlete or being. Uh, you know, a, a multi-millionaire businessman like Jay-Z or, or Diddy or whoever it is that kids are looking up to nowadays. And it's, it's making it cool and it's getting people in the, in the space and retaining kind of their interest. Um, I, I do a lot of talking about like unconscious bias, um, you know, human to human. We all have bias. We all have unconscious bias. Yes, I agree. And when you think about it in tech, people are coding everything that we do digitally. Everything is happening in code. So when you have people that don't look like us doing that coding, there's going to be bias that gets, mm -hmm. you know, ingrained in the technology that we use. Mm -hmm. I was reading an article uh, and it's, it hits home for me. It was, you know, like the, the soap dispensers, mm -hmm. uh, the automated soap dispensers. There's mm -hmm. there's certain dispensers that don't work for people of color. Like I've gone to the soap dispenser. I got another soap dispenser, oh, and I'm like doing all this, and no soap's coming out. It doesn't. It doesn't come up with the the color. Uh, yeah, yeah. So, and then you know, whoa. then John Doe comes up behind me, and it's like, oh no, bro, it works, it works, you know. Um, and it's because of the coding behind it. So they had to go back and redo the code to pick up darker skin. You know, <laughs> wow. You just had me thinking <laughs> yeah. back to all the times I'm like. I know it's happened to you before. It's ha of course. Yeah, of course. Exactly. I'm like, yo, what the? I go on to the next one. Mm -hmm. I use that one. But you see the next one come. Doo, doo, doo. Yeah. Gone. It's and crazy. It's like, yeah. I didn't realize but that's why, anything that's why to do you with coding. It has, it has oh, everything shit. to do with coding. And then another example is like, um, I was reading an article about kind of just like facial recognition. You know, mm -hmm. we use it on our iPhones. You know, they're starting to use it uh, for security and things like that, where you can just know who a person is by their face. Um, and the algorithms that were using it, I think it was Google's algorithms, um, they were 99.96% correct with white men. But with black women, it was like a crazy low percentage. Like it was get like it got Oprah confused with like a gorilla or something crazy like that. That's crazy. Yeah. So it's it's like those types of things that are gonna be controlling our future that mm -hmm. we need to make sure that we're present in the development of. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah. I, I want you. I want you to speak to your ability to to clearly follow through uh, mm-hmm. with your other ventures alongside working mm-hmm. a nine to five. Because usually people feel like they have to um, commit to one or the other, yeah. right? Or they just they you know they work in a nine to five. They have other interests involved, but they don't. They they can't. They feel like they just can't get it going, right? right. Either they don't have the patience or the discipline or whatever the case may be. You still find time to execute on a lot of the ideas that you have. You, in terms of it, you're wearing your brand right now, mm-hmm. um, talk to the audience, man, about just really following through with those goals, man. Like, what is it that you do to make sure that you stay committed? Is it people around you? Is it um, things that was instilled in you growing up? Yeah, just a combination of the two. Speak on that. It's it's really a combination of both. Um, I kind of grew up, um, and my parents were always, you finish what you start. If you commit to something, you do it. You make it happen. Um, so I, I've always had that kind of mindset. Mm-hmm. Um, and I've always been busy, too. So I think my parents did a great job of making sure that I you know, had multiple interests. I was uh, pushing myself and excelling in these different interests. So I kind of learned balance, and I've learned follow-through at a, at a very young age. But now, like, it's nothing like when you're working a nine to five and then you have all of these different ventures and passions outside of it. But I always tell myself, you're either going to get it done or you're going to make an excuse. And if it's something that you're passionate about, you're going to get it done. Mm-hmm. Um, so I've always had that mindset as well. But from a from a tactical perspective, it's surrounding yourself with people that will push you and inspire you and help you attain your goals. Mm-hmm. Um, so if if I'm a person in you know corporate America and I have these businesses on the side, I can surround myself with people that, you know, want to go to brunch and go to happy hour and go turn up every weekend, Mm -hmm. then I'm probably not going to be efficient in getting everything done. Mm -hmm. But if I'm surrounding myself with other entrepreneurs, other people that are like-minded, people that um, are on the same page and the same wavelength as me, then I'm more inspired to, you know, get shit done at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. Um, So that's, that's the biggest thing that I do. And then I make sure that I build efficient teams around uh, my businesses or my brands. So when you when you hear Two Fly Foundation, it's not just me; it's mm-hmm. a team of us. Mm-hmm. Um, if you, when you hear the Black Burdell, it's not just me; it's a team of us. When you hear the Intersection book, it's not just me; it's me and my you know co-author. Um, so that's one thing that I do to make sure that we're always pushing forward is just surrounding myself with solid teams. Mm-hmm. You know, there's that saying: you, you're the sum of the uh, what the five the five people, people you that you to. spend the most time with. Yeah. Dude, I don't even think I think five is too many. <laughs> I'm <laughs> telling you right that's now real. because. If you even if you hanging around one person all the time and that mm-hmm. one person ain't do, ain't got, got not anything going on yeah. or they're a bad influence, you only need one person to tear you down. You don't yep. need five people, mm-hmm. you know. And so, um, you know, what you're saying is definitely true, man. Uh, you, you really got to be conscious of those around you. Right. But I think it, it does speak to the character of the individual. You know, you are the yeah. company that you keep. I, I do believe that as well. Facts. Um, you you talked a little bit about the family. Mm-hmm. Um in terms of your upbringing and, and what they instilled in you, you clearly had a father in your life. Mm-hmm. Um, and I know in our talks, you mentioned uh, one time about how he, he's not just been an, a good influence to you, but also other people around you, yeah. right? People in the neighborhood and things like that. Mm-hmm. Um, talk to talk to us about that, man, and yeah. how that, like how important, how much of the, uh, an important piece that is and how other people have been able to benefit from having a you know that strong male figure in yeah. your life, like they're able to benefit from that as well. Yeah. Um, so my dad is kind of like he's my mentor. He's like the person that I look up to. He's like the smartest man when it comes to business that I know. And I I saw how much. Hold on, I gotta me, stop you. Yeah. I want you to repeat that again. The reason why I want you to repeat <laughs> that again because I, and I'm not I, I, I'm I'm serious when I say this. Yeah. You won't hear a lot of brothers say that. Yeah. I'm just going to keep it real. Facts. Not, a lot of brothers are not going to say that. Yeah. And I think what you said, you said it quickly, you said it casually, but I want you to know that it's not that casual. Right, <laughs> right. For a lot of people. Yeah. Just say it one more time. Yeah. One more time. So, so, I'll say it one more time. So my dad, my mentor, uh, he's the person that I look up to. He's like the hero. He's my, you know, when it comes to business and it comes to just dealing with people, he's like... He has emotional intelligence down packed better than anybody. So he's really like he's always been kind of my go to person as I'm starting to build and as I'm trying to, you know, finesse through corporate America and things like that. And I realized kind of looking back, I think I was in college or getting ready to graduate college. 
that, wow, my upbringing isn't like most people, you know, and, and the influence of my parents, both my mom and my dad, isn't something that a lot of my friends even had. Um, so kind of knowing that and just the nature of my family, like I share my parents with everybody, like. B's parents mm-hmm. are like everybody's parents. Mm-hmm. My friends call them mom and dad. Mm-hmm. Um, and it was funny. I think it was it was a couple weeks ago. It was my birthday. And I we went out to dinner. We came back to my crib. Um, and I had some friends over. And, you know, most times, like, we'll be drinking, talking about music or sports or something. We're sitting here talking about, you know, voting and why millennials aren't voting or why my dad felt like millennials weren't voting And we had like a healthy debate for like hours with like my friends, my cousins, my parents. And we sat back and we're like, wow, like people Mm -hmm. don't do this. Mm -hmm. (laughs) It's it's, it's 10 p.m. at night Mm -hmm. and we're talking about, Mm -hmm. uh, you know, the 2018 elections. Mm -hmm. Um, And it's I think it's just mentorship is important. Um, And I realize like the value that I've gotten from my mentors, my dad and others. And I just like sharing. I want everybody to benefit from what I benefited from. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, that's no nah, man. That's a powerful, powerful thing. And um, you know, it's it's one of the it's one of the themes that I I, I tend to come back to. You know, on the show, mm-hmm. especially when I sit down with other brothers, um, because like I like I've said in the past, you you can almost at least for me, I can tell when you know a guy is 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 brought up the right way, mm-hmm. and you can also tell when somebody's not. You know, we are the product of our environment. It's just a reality. Yeah. Um, but even sometimes a, a, a father can be around and still not have an impact on his son. You know, it's if he was here, I'm sure it would make him feel really, really good because most people would say, you know, I look up to Jay-Z or I look up to Michael Jordan. or I look up to and I'm not, you know, nothing against those individuals. But at the end of the day. You know, those are not the individuals that's with you every day. Right. Those are not the individuals that damn they brought you into this world. They're not mm-hmm. the ones that really care about you. You know yeah, what I mean? Like they're absolutely. not losing sleep off of anything that you got going on in your life. But yet, you know, we we put a lot of emphasis on entertainers and athletes. Mm-hmm. And it's it's good to admire what people do. Um, but there's a saying like, you know, be careful. Because one day you might meet your heroes and right. you might realize that they ain't who you thought they, they was. Yeah, exactly. And for a lot of people, it's a shock. Or, or your heroes become your competition and yeah. it's not, you know, it's not the same no more. Exactly. Yeah. It's definitely not the same. So um, I don't know if you, if did you speak about the Black Bordell? Because you, did you, did you talk about it just now? I don't think uh, so. I mentioned it. I you just, mentioned I just it. Said, I know yeah. you mentioned it in the yep. sentence, but I, I wanted you to kind of dive into it a little yeah. bit. So the Black Bordell is uh, the first nonprofit that I started. It kind of we we came up with the idea myself and uh, two of my friends, uh, my brothers, I guess from from college, and we kind of had the idea in college. We wanted to do something with, you know, the black community, the young community, whether that's college or high school students, but it never like really clicked. Um, so a couple years later, we came back together. We came back to the idea, and we started this organization that's all about um, providing support promotion and cultivating young black entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. So we focus on college students, we focus on high school students and young professionals, and just providing a community, providing resources, and kind of an outlet for us to to build our businesses and our brands together to learn from one another. Um, So that's really the premise of that organization. Mm -hmm. Do you, I got to ask you this, because I know you have a lot of things that you, Mm -hmm. you, you seem to target a lot of, you know, your foundation or your things towards Mm -hmm. People of color, yeah. black people, mm-hmm. our communities. I'm just curious, though. Do you do you get backlash from other cultures, white people, mm-hmm. other people, where it's like, whether it's overtly or not, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, do you do you do you sense any of that? Do you get any of that feel where it's like, damn, you know, whether it was a comment that was posted mm-hmm. or something like, has that ever happened along the way where they just kind of look at you funny for even gearing your you know your thoughts and ideas in that direction yeah I used to hear like comments or see comments especially uh like right when I first graduated I was a little bit younger um all the time like oh you know that's racist or oh Mm -hmm. you know you only care about black people this that and the third and it used to bother me a little bit and I'd be like be like typing back like clapping back and Mm -hmm. all that kind of stuff and now it really doesn't bother me anymore um because at the end of the day, it's those people that 
these organizations aren't for you anyway. Mm -hmm. Like if that's how you feel, this is definitely not for you. Mm -hmm. Um, And and I kind of realized somebody's always going to have something negative to say Mm -hmm. about you, about your brand, about what you're doing. If you're doing something positive, somebody's going to have something negative to say about it. Um, So I just kind of got over that. Mm -hmm. Um, So, yeah, I mean, it is what it is. I I have a niche. (laughs) Right. I have a niche. I have a passion. I Mm want to develop young people. I want to develop people of color. Mm -hmm. um, And that's what I kind of focus on. And, you know, I'll tell you, you know, live on air and, yeah. and even behind the scenes, man, um, keep doing that. Yeah. Keep doing that. And and one of the reasons, you know, I stress, you know, a lot of information in that direction as well is because they're the ones that need it the most. Facts. That's why. <laughs> you see what I'm exactly. saying? Like, because they're, they're the ones that a lot of the other information that's negative is targeted mm-hmm. towards them. So, you know, of course, I'm going to put some positivity that way. Of course, I'm going to shed some light that way to offset the other things. You know, everything you look around you, for the most part, is showing us in a negative way, shows us as being, you know, just not capable of doing this or not capable of doing that. If you have ideas, if you have things that can uplift someone, you know, where they don't have that figure around them, they don't have anybody pushing them, motivating them, telling them that they could be great. You being in the position that you are, where you're not causing any crimes, you're not hurting anybody, you just out here trying to be positive and trying to live your life. Of course, yeah. you know why not cater it towards the people because they need it the most. Absolutely. So Completely you know, agree. I don't, I don't fault you at all, man. And you know, if you ever get to that point where you you're questioning it, don't question it. Right. Don't question it. Don't even question it at all, man. <laughs> uh, I know one of the things that you're passionate about also is fitness. Yep. You know, just judging by your page, you know, yep. you you talk a lot about that. Um, talk to me, like what what not just physical but also mental fitness. Yeah. Right? yeah. Mental health. So talk to me about that. Yeah. So I, I was always kind of an athlete. I was always into fitness, working out, uh, growing up. So that was that was always a thing. But I realized. Um, you know, probably in college, I, I found myself getting anxious a lot or, you know, just feeling like burnt out and like stressed. Because um, even in college, I was like mad busy doing this, that and the third, whether it's school, whether it's extracurriculars, whether it's community involvement. Like I was just always busy. And I realized that, you know, I was anxious. I was I was stressed and fitness kind of turned into how I kind of dealt with that and kind of got me through it. And the whole mindset of health is wealth kind of came into play. Um, so I'm now, I'm still, you know, in the gym, you know, at least five days a week. Um, I kind of started a campaign called accountability. So it's just making sure that you're accountable for your health, um, both mentally and physically. Mm-hmm. Um, and being accountable for, for your community's health as well and your friends and your squad mm-hmm. and making sure that people are good, checking in on them, uh, making sure that they're taking care of themselves. Uh, so I, it's, it's kind of an outlet at the same time where it's, you know, I can, I can deal with my anxiety or I can mm-hmm. deal with me being anxious or stressed or, or down for whatever reason. Mm-hmm. And I can kind of let it all out at the gym. I always say, man, that's, you know, when you can give it all in the gym, yeah. it's going to translate to other areas of yeah, your life. Facts, yeah. Right. And so I'm sure you, you, some of your ideas or some of your, you know, you, you've been able to filter through a lot of things while working mm-hmm. out. Um, do you, I mean, does that, do you kind of look at it as your safe place as well? Yeah, yeah. So most of my ideas come to me when I'm on the treadmill or I'm mm-hmm. on the, you know, on the bench. Um, and, and in addition, I remember kind of growing up talking to, talking about my dad again, mm-hmm. hearing like, you know, mental toughness, push through, like mm-hmm. you can finish that last rep, you know, mm-hmm. and that whole idea of perseverance and like finishing what you start and, and always kind of increasing positively um, that kind of all originated with sports and in the gym. Um, so it's to your point, it's like a metaphor for just life and, and getting through things and, and finishing what you start. Mm-hmm. Let's, let's talk about the awards. Let, let, let's yeah. get let's get to that. Um, now that we have an understanding of yeah. some of the things that you got into. <laughs> right, right. We, we um, walked through everything. We, we, we went through it. Yeah. Let, let's get to one of the culminations of it. Yep. Um, you know, you getting awarded for the foundation, man. Talk about that night. Talk about how it felt um, to be there amongst your peers. Um, from what I understand, it was, you know, it was a good showing. It was a good crowd. Yeah. Um, amazing. You know, I've seen some of the pictures online. Everybody looks amazing. Everybody was sauced out. Um, yeah, everybody was, you know, it was looking like the Grammys. You right, know what I mean? Right. It, was, it, was, it was good. Um, but talk to me about that, man. Like, how was that yeah. about? 
Yeah, so the whole experience, was, it was really unique. It was really special. For me, I'm not a huge, like, awards person. And when I say that, I'm not saying that I'm not appreciative of awards and our accomplishments, but, you know, titles are cool, but, like, I'm all about what the work, what's the work that you're doing? You know, what's next? What are you mm-hmm. going to use this for? Um, so that's always been my mindset. So I was happy to be nominated uh, for Two Fly to be, to be nominated for an award. That just means that, you know, the community is receptive to what we're doing. They know about what we're doing. They're supportive of what we're doing. So that just meant the world to me in itself. Um, fast forwarding to the night of the awards, we were all, me, Brian, and Bola, those are my co-founders, um, we were all kind of at my spot getting ready. And we were just like, oh, this is going to be cool. You know, we'll get to see everybody. But we were not expecting to win. Um, mm-hmm. I'm friends with some of the other organizations that we were up against. And we were up against some, like, dope organizations that are doing great things in our community. So we were just like, we're going to be there. We're going to network. So, so you had no idea prior to that. I hadn't sitting, absolutely no Because I know some, you know, obviously the major awards, usually they let them know. Yeah. You know, like, yeah, you're going to win no this. Idea. You're going to win that. So it yeah. wasn't even like they told you the day before, an hour or two before, like, yo, you're going to win, get your speech ready, whatever. Nah. You went in there blindfolded, didn't know what Facts. was going to happen. Facts. Okay. So, yeah, we were we were in the Uber uh, Brian Bowl and I, uh, we weren't like apathetic, but we were just like, we were going along for the ride. Like we were just happy to be there mm-hmm. type of mentality. Um, and it's funny, we were the first award, um, that was given out that night. Oh yeah. So it was like, we had <laughs> no time the, to get our mind right yeah. or nothing like that. It is through the ice right. water on you right away. Exactly. And, okay. and one of our friends of the organization and one of my good friends, uh, Biddy or Brittany, what mm-hmm. most people call her. Yeah, she was the one. Biddy, I noticed yeah, that. Yeah, Shout out to Brittany, friend Shout of the show. Brittany. Yes, yes. Um, she was the one. Uh, she works with Cosign, so she was the one that presented our award. Um, so it was like she was kind of giving the spiel about the importance of nonprofits and community uplift, and then she starts talking, and she was like, "And this is the organization that I appreciate, and an organization that I donate to." So we're sitting here like. She talking about us like mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and then we got the award and we were we were not ready for it. But it was uh, <laughs> it was exciting. We we're definitely appreciative. Uh, it definitely was kind of like the icing on the cake mm-hmm. to a very eventful year for us. We kind of let were me, at the let me ahead. pause you a minute because I just realized I don't think we explained to them what the Cosign Awards is. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Backtrack. Um, backtrack. Let's backtrack a yes. little bit. Um just give people a briefing in yeah. terms of what the Cosign Awards is and yeah, the yeah. fact that it's in Dallas. Just a little briefing on that. Yeah, so the Cosign Awards is hosted by uh, Cosign Magazine, which is a, a Dallas-based media company, a, a digital print magazine. And what they're all about is kind of highlighting different people, different brands, different businesses um, in our community, especially those of people of color. Um, so they do they put out magazines, they put out events, um, a really dope brand and business that I full heartedly co-sign, mm-hmm. uh, pun intended, I guess. Mm-hmm. Um, but they they host an annual awards show mm-hmm. where they highlight some of the best and brightest talent in Dallas when it comes to all kinds of categories from entrepreneurship to the beauty industry, to the fitness industry, to entrepreneurship, influence and things like that. So we were Two Fly Foundation was nominated for the nonprofit of the year award. Yeah, and so they, I know they have um, several other categories. Yeah. It's an annual thing. It was, what, their second one? Second one, yeah. Right, so it's it's, it's pretty, it's growing. This one was yeah, bigger yeah. than the last one. I'm sure the next one's going to be out. even bigger yeah. than the... Cavassier was there. Drinks were flowing. Like it was, yeah, it, it was dope. The music, yeah. all that? Oh, yeah, they had the DJ. They had the music going. Let me find out, yeah. man. They, 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 had, they had, like, the walk-up music and everything. Like, it yeah. was, like, a, a real award show. Yeah, actually, yeah. I do see the pictures yeah. where I see people yeah. coming down the aisle getting ready to get right. their awards, or they, they actually have the physical award. Yeah. Man, that's dope. Yeah, so it was, it was great. The team was appreciative. And it's funny because we had a planning meeting for 2019. The organization was coming together on Sunday, so the day after mm-hmm. the awards. Uh, so we were, like, preparing for that and thinking about that, not really the awards. So it kind of turned into a celebration slash 2019 planning meeting. Mm-hmm. Um, so it, it just came at the right time. Nah, man. Uh, con- congratulations to you, man. Yes. Definitely. The, and congrats the, to the team. Shout out to Bola. Shout out to Brian. Yes. Congratulations to your team. Yeah. Um, it just goes to show you what, you know, it's, I think it's always good to have some that appreciation for what it is that you do. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it's, it's, it's great. I mean, we all do things. It's good to do things for right reasons. Right. It's, you shouldn't necessarily be seeking validation um but you know you don't necessarily have to turn it away when it comes Absolutely. you know what i mean and yeah. so um it's good to hear that what you're doing is being recognized and and i would tell you just continue 
continue doing what you're doing um, because clearly it's making a difference. Um, I want to I want to kind of dive into that a little bit deeper. Right. In terms of the fact of you being an entrepreneur outside of work. Right. Mm -hmm. That that mindset. Um, What do you think it takes, you know, to be an entrepreneur, to start your own thing? If you had to think of one important thing. Right. Because there's there's many things. There's many factors. Right. Mm -hmm. Some people think it's money. Some people think it's popularity or whatever the case may be. If you had to think of one thing in order to obviously you're still doing it. So mm-hmm. you, you know, but just to achieve any level of success, right. what would be that one thing? All right. I don't, I'm going to make it one thing, but it's technically two things. So just don't okay, get mad on, at me. Go ahead, All go ahead, right. Go ahead. Um, I would say it's passion and purpose at okay. the end of the day. So if it, there's, I see so many businesses that start and aren't sustainable because people are doing things that they're not passionate about. Mm. Like if you're a graphic designer that doesn't like graphic designing, your business is not going to be sustainable at the end of the day. Mm-hmm. Um, and especially with my our generation, millennial generation, um, people like ownership. People like having something that's theirs, that they own, that they control, and that's fine. But when you're doing it just to do it or, mm-hmm. you know, starting a blog just to say I have a blog, you know, it's not sustainable at the end of the day. Your quality is going to suffer. Your, you know, your business isn't isn't going to last or it's going to be it's going to be painful to make it last. Mm-hmm. And then the second piece is obviously perseverance, as I said, and we kind of talked about that, you know, entrepreneurship is not easy (laughs) because it ain't, there's going to be times you don't have money. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. There's going to be times you're not going to have money, Mm -hmm. times you're not going to have energy, Mm -hmm. time you're not going to have time. You're not going to have time. Like Mm -hmm. there's always going to be something. Um, So your your passion should be the fuel in your tank, but you got to know you got to persevere. Sometimes you got to, you know, you got to adjust the engine, rotate your tires, you know, but you gotta you gotta keep moving forward. Mm-hmm. Um, so I would say at the end of the day, it's those two things. And on the flip side of that, you know what what is the what is the difficulty that you face? You know, uh, whether it's uh, I would say on a daily basis. Yeah. Um, you know, the challenges. What are the challenges like on a daily basis for you? You know, in order for you to be able to accomplish the goals that you set out for yourself. For me. Um, they usually they usually like result to something that's just mental mm. and it's usually like am mm-hmm. i doing what i'm supposed to be doing am i am i devoting too much time into x y or z like should i be focusing on this and you know i'm a man of faith man of god so i'm always like all right god so you know what are we doing what you're trying to teach me you mm-hmm. know <laughs> why is this not working out mm-hmm. why is this not selling like whatever it is and it, it's usually all mental mm-hmm. um and you know, I tell people that your mental space will will make you or break you. So it's mm-hmm. it's being able to kind of harness that that mentality to to keep going. And um, you know, I talk to God daily on you know, am I am I doing what I'm supposed to be doing? Mm-hmm. Um, and, and yeah, so and I noticed, yeah, you post a lot of content, man. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of inspirational content. Uh, you know, be understanding and and you know, attached mm-hmm. to your be great brand. And yeah. I don't know if you had a chance to really talk um, deeper about the brand but like what's the what's the meaning behind it yeah Uh, so the meaning behind the be great brand is all about motivating others to to embrace their greatness or embrace what it is that they're passionate about or what makes them unique or what they love doing Um, and it's just motivating you to you know just keep going Uh, I always kind of got looked at as you know I've always been a leader in some capacity or um, you know starting a business or starting an initiative and people would be like, well, what keeps you going? Or, you know, why do you, why do you keep doing what motivates you? Mm-hmm. So I use my brand as a platform to kind of talk about the things that I think about and what keeps me going and what keeps me pushing at the end of the day. Um, and people are like, oh, you got, you have all this planned out content. Mm-hmm. I wish it was like super planned out like that. I literally <laughs> post about what I go through as I go through it. Mm-hmm. So when Organic. you see, yeah, mm-hmm. when you see the be understanding image on my Instagram page, mm-hmm. it's because I was about ready to flip the switch on somebody and mm-hmm. I had to tell myself to be understanding. Mm-hmm. And then I wrote about it. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's, it's all about what I kind of go through and telling my stories in a, in a way that can resonate with people and motivate others. Mm-hmm. So I know you uh, you mentioned to me earlier that you you do some consulting. Mm-hmm. Um, you were blogging at one point. Yeah. Um, so I want like what kind of help do you do provide to mm-hmm. other people in regards to others who maybe want to set up a brand or, or some sort of other initiative? Yeah. Um, so I kind of 
became the brand guy, where I can I help people build their brands, whether that's their personal brand and, and how they're received on a personal level um, or their business brand. So if they're starting a, a, a nonprofit or a for-profit or an initiative um, and really consulting and coaching on, you know, the fundamentals of, you know, how do you develop your mission and your vision and your core values to your execution and doing you know, a strengths and weakness analysis and figuring out like, what can I do on an execution level to enhance my brand and to grow my brand? Um, so I do a lot of consulting and coaching in that space. Mm -hmm. um, and I've also put out a product, um, it's called the Brand You Workbook, which is you can get it digitally or physically. And it's literally just a workbook on how to start a brand. Mm -hmm. And it's, I talk through examples of what I've done to from, you know, point A all the way to point Z in building my brand. And it's, tips, tricks, and, you know, questions for you to answer, activities for you to do to help enhance and grow whatever it is that you're trying to do. Nah, man, that's, that's, that's awesome, man. Um, yeah. I think it's important, it's important to get information like that, you know, especially mm -hmm. if you're building a brand. Um, there's a lot that goes into it, right? you know, and consistency is important, right? You got to make sure that you're consistent about whatever it is that you're putting out there. Yeah. Um, and so I, I definitely see the value in that. You know, so I want to I wanted to get into well, I had I had a couple things. Um, I there's something that I'm adding to the show uh, okay. where, you know, I, I I ask you guys a couple. Mm -hmm. I ask you guys a word. I mentioned a word. OK. And you tell me what's the first thing that comes to your mind. OK. It can be either a person mm -hmm. or a phrase. OK. All right. So it's not a it's not a long answer. It's right. either a person that comes to mind. Or a particular phrase that comes to mind. Okay. Good? All right. Yeah. Um, entrepreneur. Uh, Diddy. Okay. Yeah. Music. Oh, uh, 90s R&B. Mm. Just in general. <laughs> I'm with you on that. I'm with you on that. <laughs> Damn, bring it back. Right. Bring it back. Exactly. That's all I listen to. It ain't to never coming boy. back. Right. I swear. I feel like it ain't <laughs> never coming back, right. boy. <laughs> Oh man, yeah, we gotta go. We we gotta come back to that. Yeah, topic, man. I got <laughs> man, forget it. Um, family, uh, everything, sports. Uh, man, and I was gonna say entertaining. I was trying to think of a team, but I don't even got a team anymore. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, movies. Uh, horror movies or suspense movies. Those are, those are my favorite. The last one, passion. Uh, uplifting community. Love it. Love it. Was there anything, was there anything I didn't cover, man? Anything that you wanted to, to, to mention about? <laughs> we, we talked about a lot. I think I, we, we, I'll tell you, one you did your research because we, we checked, we checked, <laughs> we checked all the boxes today. <laughs> um, I'll tell you one thing that, that came to my mind, man, and especially the fact that you're doing a lot of things, man, and you're young, you mentioned mm -hmm. the party and you mentioned having fun, you know, that's, that's a part of life as well. And yeah. there's always time to be serious. Um, I want to talk about like distractions, mm -hmm. right? Because that's, we're surrounded by distractions everywhere yeah. we go. Shit, our cell phone to me feels like our biggest oh, competitor. Yeah. You know, that gets a lot of our attention on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. um, you know, how do you how do you get around the distractions? The the people that how do you wean out the people that, you know, I, you know, it's cool to hang out with you. Yeah. Um, but, you know, you're going down a different path than I'm going. Right. Down. Right. You know, like, what, where does it where does it stop for you? Where it's like, yeah. Yeah. My thing is like I always tell myself, like, don't let your distractions distract you. Mm -hmm. Um, and it's, it sounds like kind of like a dumb statement, but you know, you said your cell phone, your cell phone can be a distraction, but it can also be a tool. It can be a tool. Um, like I, I my cell phone's always in my hand and people are always like, B, you're always on your phone. You're always like, who are you talking to? What are you doing? Half the time I'm, you know, scrolling through articles mm -hmm. or I'm, you know, trying to do a deal on Instagram DMs. Like I'm not going down in the DMs for mm -hmm. nothing crazy. I'm like trying mm -hmm. to connect with people and trying to build. Um, so I'm like always kind of in work mode, um, or I'm usually in work mode. Mm -hmm. Um, and when it comes to, to like relationships and friendships, like that's mm -hmm. the toughest piece. Um, and I kind of have, I talk about like levels of friendship or like, mm -hmm. you know, you can be a level one where you're like all the way, like you're an acquaintance, like, you know, I'll see you like if I hit a happy hour, if I go out one night and it's, 
you know, hey, what's up? Good to see you. It's been a minute. You know, what you been up to? Want to drink? Mm-hmm. Cool. All right. Catch you next time. Mm-hmm. And then you kind of have level two, which is a little bit more intimate. Like you're cool. Like you actually kind of care about that. Well, I shouldn't say you don't care about level ones, but mm-hmm. you you know them on a deeper level. Mm-hmm. Um, and then you have your level three, which is like that's damn near family. And it's these are the people that I'm talking to every day. These are the people that are checking in on me and making sure that I'm good. It's people I'm checking in on, asking how I can help, how I can support. And that's like, you know, as you get, you know, to a higher level on that pyramid, um, you know, it gets smaller and smaller. So about like 10 percent makes it to each level, you know. Mm -hmm. Um, So that that level, my level three friendship is like it's a small circle. Mm -hmm. Um, So it's spending more time with, with that community and that group. You're going to have a lot less distractions. And if you're with the, you know, the level ones that want to go out every night, want to drink uh, and, and all of that. So, mm-hmm. no, I agree with you, man. It, yeah. It's um, there's levels to this. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> there's there definitely levels yeah, to this. Yeah, throw that on um, a T-shirt. You know, yeah. Hey, man, listen, <laughs> <laughs> coming to you soon. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> levels to this. Have little little stairs, right. Uh, stuff, little levels. That reminds little. me of the, uh, you know, at the end of every year when mm-hmm. they got the like the the girl walking up the stairs mm-hmm. with her baggage mm-hmm. and stuff dropping mm-hmm. off. That's what it reminds me. Yep. Of. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Levels, <laughs> definitely levels, man. You ready for the new year? What did, What are some of the things you got planned, man? Yeah. Or, or you're looking forward to? Yeah, so we only got a couple couple days left of this year. Yeah, what you got? So, so right now I'm in like straight like plan and goal setting mode, getting ready for 2019. Um, and it's I got a lot of cool stuff planned. Some mm-hmm. of it's top secret and it's mm-hmm. gonna be kind of rolled out nice uh, slowly. But you know, with the Two Fly Foundation, we're gonna have some more um, fundraisers uh, nationwide, and then we're gonna be doing a lot more locally in Dallas and like. We really want to make an impact in our Dallas community and with Dallas students. So we're going to be doing some cool stuff here. Um, The Be Great brand, I'm going to be shifting a little bit. So it's still going to have the same premise. um, But I'm really going to be focusing my brand on community uplift and uh, excuse me, bridging culture and technology and culture and business. So talking about things like we were talking about with AI and how we can get some more people of color interested in STEM, Mm -hmm. um, how we can utilize our creativity and, and what we're passionate about to do social good. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I have some ideas and some some things coming up uh, that I think are going to be pretty cool, pretty unique for the Dallas community. So I'm excited about that. Man, I'm excited for yeah. you, man. Yeah. Just, just keep moving forward. Um, Can't stop. Keep Won't innovating. Stop. Yeah, yeah, man. Keep innovating, <laughs> man. Sky's the limit. Yeah, absolutely. Um, dude, tell us like where to find you, where, you know, drop your socials, yep. everything, man. Got it. I, not my, not my, uh, not my social, social, but you know, <laughs> social media. Social media. Social I got media. you. I was like, you're asking for too much right now. Uh, <laughs> um, you can follow me on Instagram and Twitter at that guy B Mills. That's that guy B M I L L S. Mm-hmm. Also follow Two Fly Fundraiser, The Black Burdell, The Intersection Book. Um, those are the brands. And then everything that you need and that I talked about, you can find on my website, which is brandonemiller.com. It'll link out to all of these different businesses and you can subscribe to my newsletter and things like that. So that's the easiest way to contact me. Reach out. Say mm-hmm. what's up. Yeah. Man, I'm, I, I got to thank you for coming through. No, man. Thank you. Definitely appreciate you, my brother. For sure. Um, I love what you're doing. Keep doing it. Um, if anything I could do to, to, to help or, or any type of info, man, I'm, I'm always willing to share, man. I'm always yeah. willing to, to to help anybody grow, man. And, and you know, I definitely see you know, some, some great qualities in you, man, just appreciate in the time that. that we've interacted, man. So I really do appreciate you coming on here, sharing your story, being candid. Definitely appreciate that, bro. Anytime, so you, anytime. You're always welcomed, you know, anytime, you know, there's something on your mind, there's some things, you know, you want to, this is always going to be the platform for you. Perfect. I All appreciate right? that. So before we go, definitely got to thank uh, everyone out there in YouTube land who's watching this, uh, people who are listening to this on iTunes, Spotify, Podbean, Google Play. I'm also, good news guys, I'm also on Stitcher, uh, which is uh, another great app to listen to podcasts because you can leave comments. You'll be able to leave a comment on this episode on Do Stitcher. It. Do it. Uh, let this man know how he did. Um, and also make sure that you check him out uh, on his page as well. And then last but not least, definitely thank you to the Patreons out there, the people who are supporting the show. Um, one of the benefits I mentioned before, you're able to see this particular episode in advance or so sort of like a pre-screening Um, as well as some other benefits as well. So definitely shout out to you guys. So with that being said, we are out. Peace and love, you guys. Be great. Peace.